just out for a walk and uh, what I'm going to talk to you about today is uh, is it game over for nudge theory and for behavioural economics in general. So over the last two years the, the UK government in particular has relied heavily on applied behavioural psychology to manipulate people's behaviour in a direction that the government um, has desired. <clears throat> So, as I say, this is part of something that's called behavioural economics. And um, the it's a, it's a very popular part of economics, and it has been for the last 10 or 15 years. So, well, what, what's it about? Well, beha basically, behavioural economics, it, it pu puts, puts forward this assertion that the general public are stupid, they're irrational, and as a result of that, they're not able to run their own lives properly. Um, they make stupid decisions <clears throat> that leave them worse off. So using a sort of an economist phrase, um, people themselves are unable to maximise their own utility um, because they're incompetent and... Well, they don't say stupid. They use the, the, this, the, the word irrational. OK. So, uh, and, and therefore... Because people are unable to make their own decisions properly, uh, mummy government needs to step in and to save themselves, save them from themselves. So they need to be nudged away from what they would like to do uh, towards what the government would like them to do uh, instead. And that's sold, as I say, under the, the premise that the government um, cares about people and that the government is better able to run your life as an individual better than you can yourself. So there are a number of problems with that. Um, first and foremost is uh, how dare somebody in government, a central planner, smear my purposeful actions with, with, with the label irrational. I might not choose to do what Chris Whitty does, or Boris Johnson does, um, not because I'm irrational, but because I'm just different from them. You know, I have different goals and objectives. I have um, different tastes. And uh, my, my, my ranking of um, what I want from my life is um, very, very different from, from what their subjective preferences are. So, you know, when I lived in England, I used to go and watch uh, Morecambe Football Club play in League Two. And I used to live in Guildford, and it used to take about um, four and a half hours to get there, five hours to get there by train. It used to cost me all in probably about 200 quid. I'm sure the, the, the head of the, the school that I worked for at the time, she would have, she would have labelled my behaviour, my choices as being irrational. Uh, but it wasn't. It was, um, it was just a... Now, I particularly enjoyed, my actions were partially speculative in the sense that, you know, I really hoped that uh, Morecambe would win whenever I went and watched them play away and at home. And um, often I was disappointed because <laughs> they weren't very good. But so uh, my actions were purely rational and because um, it related to my own personal preferences. Um, it'd be very easy for me to, I think, like a lot of opera music, you know, Wagner and stuff like that, I think it's awful, absolutely, absolutely awful music. Um, so I would say, you know, from my subjective point of view, I would say anyone who goes and watches Wagner is a complete fool, it's irrational, you know, it's tuneless music. So, um, so the point I'm trying to get at here is that, um, Intelligent people would, should never smear other people's uh, choices and actions with a, a pejorative word like irrational or vague or anything like that. Um, differences in our behaviour, more often than not, stem from differences in our subjective preferences rather than, you know, the fact that uh, you're a superhuman and I'm, I'm a stupid idiot a fool who needs to be nudged in a particular direction. Anyway, um, this kind of begs another question, doesn't it? Which is, can you actually rely on the government even wanting to nudge people um, in a direction that, that benefits them? 
rather than the government trying to nudge people in a direction that benefits the government. And obviously, I think um, the last two years has been a classic case in point in that. You know, that what's happened is that uh, the, the government has uh, wanted to move towards um, central bank digital currencies and, and I guess a, an authoritarian society which they control and what they did was uh, they used nudge theory now to try to move people away from their preferences you know like people might um, want to go on a foreign holiday for example they might not want to wave a, wear a slave muzzle they might not want to spend weeks on end locked up inside their house so what you have to do to create that, that outcome is, is nudge and what happened in Britain was that the government misled people it deliberately set out to uh, create an information war and the goal was to generate fear that was going to nudge people into accepting all of these changes that the government wanted to see and these changes were not in the general public's interest. They were in the uh, interests of Klaus Schwab, etc. So, how is this a sustainable strategy? You know, is behavioral economics something that you can use over and over again? And, um, you know, I would say, no, it's not. It, it has a finite shelf life. Um, for this reason that I'm going to use now, you know, that the government uh, grossly overstated the risks of uh, dying from Divock 91. They grossly overstated the benefits of attending the, uh, the Britney Spears and the Boosters concerts. I'm at the uh, part of the river estuary now. Um, they... Um, over overstated the benefits of wearing face muzzles. Now the problem about this, I suppose you could sum it up with the phrase, couldn't you? Fool, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on, shame on me. I hope I've got that right. Let me say that again. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah, that's the right way around. So... Yeah, what's happening is that, that um, well, this is what I foresee. The truth always comes out in the long run. I did a video about that. Um, you know, this section's in the Bible about that. You know, whispers in behind closed doors in quiet places. They always become known. And that's what's happening now. The truth about the, the true lethality of Divock 91 is coming out. The truth about the, uh, the, the um, slave muzzles is coming out. And um, above all else, the truth about the, uh, the Britney Spears and the boosters is also coming out too. So people will realize that um, they, they were nudged using false information. Now, for me, as an Austrian school economist, I believe that human beings are rational. And as I say, any differences in uh, individual behaviour isn't down to the fact that one person is rational and somebody else is irrational. It's just down to a different scale of subjective preferences. But what we can say for certain then is that people will learn from experiences. And if you've been lied to by somebody, if you've been lied to by the government, then that's just a one-off trick. You can't keep on playing that trick um, because once people realise that they were conned, they're not gonna. They're not. They're just gonna switch off. They're not going to listen to the scaremongering by mainstream media about um, you know the, the 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 spots on your face caused by um, M O N K E Y you know P O X. You know, they're not gonna listen to any of that that stuff because they just know that it comes from the same sources that that lied that blatantly lied to them for the best part of two years people so this is um this is what happens if you lie you can manipulate somebody's behavior once you can maybe use misinformation to nudge people once or maybe twice but after that people will learn and they will just cease 
to listen to you. So your ability to nudge is not there anymore because you can't even effectively communicate people because they've just they've switched you off. They're not going to listen to you. They're just going to. In, in fact, what they're more likely to do is play game theory with you. They'll say, well, oh, they're telling me X, Y, and Z. Ah, so what do they really want? They want me to do this. So what I might do is the exact opposite because I don't trust these fuckers. Um, and it, it happened well before Divock 91, all of this stuff as well. You know, um, if, if you think about um, diet, you know, for many, many years, um, the majority of Brits weren't, weren't overweight or obese. And, um, you know, then you had this change in dietary advice that, that told people that eating natural products like butter was bad for them. And, um, you know, the government successfully nudged people away from sugary, towards sugary processed crap. Um, people were also nudged away from buying petrol cars to um, buying expensive diesel replacements wasted thousands of pounds of money buying new cars that they didn't need and then it comes out later that um, this information was completely bogus what that does is it erodes trust and uh, once you've lost that trust behavioral economics uh, from the government's point of view becomes about as useful as a chocolate teapot and uh, that's basically where we're in i guess the only thing if you can't nudge people the only thing that that leaves you with is um, just just pure force authoritarianism. You know, you will do what we tell you to do um, because if you don't, I'll, we'll just send the boys boys in blue. It's not not that anymore, is it? The boys in black around with big sticks to beat the hell out of you, uh, or we'll we'll take you away and uh, no one will see you again. That's your only other alternative to this. So basically, um, one last time, what I'm saying is, is that um, behavioural economics, it's had its day, especially in Britain. Nudge theory, pasta la vista, game over. It won't work anymore. And um, with that, um, God bless.